discuss rather briefly what can happen when you're trying to graph and solve a system of equations. A system of equations in this case is going to be two equations and two unknowns, something like 6x minus 2y equals 0 and say 5x plus 2y equals 22. So that's a system of equations. It's called a two by two system because we have two equations and two unknowns. So if you're working with this, what could happen? What are the, what are the possibilities? Well, first of all, let's understand what you're looking for geometrically. Geometrically, you're looking for the place where these two lines cross each other. And you're not guaranteed that they're going to cross each other. You just hope that they cross each other. So there's three different possibilities. Now you should have a handout, and these are outlined on your handouts. So if you want to just refer to that there, that's fine. In fact, maybe I can look at it as well with you. Uh, that is if I find mine. Here we go. So the first possibility is that your two lines cross each other. And if your two lines cross each other, that's great news because that's your solution to a system of equations. Um, another possibility is that the two lines are parallel to each other, in which case there's no solution. Because your solution is the point that's in common to both graphs. It's a point that satisfies both equations. Now there's one last possibility here. It's not really highlighted so well. So let me just talk about it. Uh, let's see. I don't know. All my rulers go. Thank you. So the last possibility in terms of what can happen when you're graphing a system of equations is you have two lines. Here's, say, the first one. And here's the second one. And those two lines are one right on top of the other. In which case, instead of no solutions, you have an infinite number of solutions. So there's really three possibilities. One, none, or infinitely many solutions. Now the vocabulary for this is written on your handout. Uh, a system of equations is consistent if there's at least one solution. So this is consistent. If you're not consistent, what are you? Inconsistent. So this one's inconsistent. How about this last one? Is that consistent or inconsistent? That one's consistent. But there is something that, that bothers us about this one, and that is the solutions for one are really kind of the solutions for the other. So there's a dependency, and this is called a dependent system. Now where we're going in section 10.2, I'm not really going to work about, worry about that vocabulary part too much. But if you're not dependent, what are you? Independent. These other two cases are independent. Independent. Now we're going to have a couple different ways you can solve our system of equations. You could graph them and try and find the point of intersection based on a graph. That's great. There's also uh, the substitution method and the addition method. So let's take a look at both of those. We'll start out with problem number 32. So 3 quarters x plus 1 half y equals 5. And minus one quarter x 
minus 3 halves y equals 1. Now, working with this system of equations as is would be kind of a pain because of the fractions. So the first thing that I would suggest we do is we get rid of the fractions. How can we get rid of the fractions in problem number 32? All right, multiply the top equation by 4 eh, and the bottom equation by 4, right? Multiplying by 4 in both cases is really multiplying by the LCD. What equation does that give me when I multiply everything by 4? Page? What do I get here, please? Good. Minus x. Minus 6y equals 4. Perfect. So, all right, I cleaned up the fractions. That's something you should be able to do. If they were decimals here, I would do likewise. Multiply by some power of 10 to clear out the decimals. But to finish this up, I want to get, I want to solve for x and y. Let me multiply the bottom equation by 3. So if I multiply the bottom equation by 3, then I'll get negative 3x minus 18y equals 12. And the top equation is 3x plus 2y equals 20. Our rules of algebra allow us to add these two equations together. And you can hopefully see why I chose to multiply this by 3. What's going to happen to these two here? They cancel out. So I get negative 16y equals 32. So y equals negative 2. Yay. Now if y equals negative 2, what do I do to find x? Yeah, plug it back in. So I'm just going to choose this top equation. It's going to be 3x plus 2 times negative 2 equals 20. So if I add 4 to both sides, I get 3x equals 24, or x equals 8. If you're looking up your answer in the back of the book or on WebAssign or something like that, you'll see it written like this, x and then y, 8 and then negative 2. Mm. Okay. Now let me ask you a question. Suppose I go over here to Desmos and I graph these things. The nice thing about Desmos is that I don't need to have Y solved for. So let's clear out these. Am I going to see these two lines cross each other? Where should they cross each other? Yeah, 8 and negative 2. So here's one line. Let's do the other one. Negative x minus 6y equals 4. And right where we predicted, 8, negative 2. Nice. So even though it's easy to forget about it, do keep in mind that underlying this, there's a little bit of geometry that represents where these two lines cross each other. Let's try another one. Problem number 38. A little bit friendlier in, in one sense. We don't have any fractions to deal with. So we've got negative 3x plus 5y equals 2 and 9x minus 15y equals 6. So if you're going to solve this one by addition, how much you proceed? Yeah, let's multiply the top equation by 3. So that's going to give me minus 9x plus 15y equals 6 added to 9x minus 15y equals 6. What do I get when I add those two together? 
Zero equals 12. Does zero equal 12? No. What's going wrong here? There's no solution, but why? Perfect. These two lines are parallel. They have the same slope, but different y-intercepts. So if you were to graph them, you should see that they're parallel. Minus 3x plus 5y equals, negative, or equals 2. And then parallel to that, 9x minus 15y equals 6. So the two lines are exactly parallel. That's why you're getting this strange thing that really represents no solution. Okay, a couple more here. Um, let's take a look at problem number 46. So some more fractions, 3 halves x minus 1 third y equals 1 half, and 2x minus 1 half y is equal to negative 1 half. So I'd suggest that you start by multiplying both sides through by a common denominator. In the case of the first equation, what's the LCD? Six. Six. And the second equation, the LCD is just a two. I'll do the second equation for you. That's going to be 4x minus y equals negative one. See if you can handle the first one. Now, if you get twisted around doing with fractions like, oh, I'm just terrible at these things, look, I'm not going to be looking over your shoulder. Take out your calculator and get it right. Take out your calculator and do, for instance, 6 times 3 divided by 2. Oh, 9. Cool. So you get 9x minus what? Good. 9x minus 2y equals 3. Now let's solve this one by a different method. Let's solve this one by substitution. Now it'd be easy to solve it by the addition method. Personally, I'd probably multiply this bottom equation by negative 2. That would put a positive 2 here, and I'd be able to cancel. But if I'm going to solve this a different way by, say, substitution, what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for one of the variables. And let's pick y. I always try and look for something that has a coefficient of 1 or negative 1. If I solve for y in this equation, I'll move the y to the right-hand side and the negative 1 to the left-hand side. And rearranging things, I get 4x plus 1 equals y. And that's nice. That's very handy. Because that means that y and 4x plus 1 are interchangeable. And I can take that expression here and plug it into the other equation. Now make sure that you plug it into the other equation. Don't plug back into the same equation. So this is going to be 9x minus 2 times 4x plus 1 equals 3. If you distribute the negative 2, we get x minus 2 equals 3 or x equals 5. Not so bad. Okay. I know what x is. How do I find y? Where should I go to find y? Plug it back in. Now let me give you three choices. Call it a, b, and c. Where would you plug it in to find y? Absolutely. Use c, because you've already got y solved for. So it's easy just to plug in x. You get 4 times 5 plus 1 is y, so y equals 21. In the back of the book, you'd see your solution is 5 comma 21. All right, 
Let's do one last problem from this section. Are we okay with uh, the quick review we've got here so far? All right, let's take a look at problem number 52. So 18.72 x minus 14.91 y equals 12.33. And then 6.21x minus 12.92y equals 17.82. Okay. Do you want to solve this one? The addition method or the substitution method? I'm surprised. Oh, I'm impressed, too. I was expecting people to say neither. <laughs> like, no, I don't want to do this one at all. All right. Well, how about if we try and do this one with some technology? Does that sound like a better option? There's only one little thing that we have to take care of. Your calculator is not like Desmos. Desmos, I can type this in directly. Your calculator, what do you need to do in order to graph these equations? Yeah, you need to get y by itself. You have to solve this equation for y. So let me do it this way here. I'm going to move the y to the right-hand side because that's going to make it positive when it moves over to the right-hand side. Then the 12.33 moves over to the left-hand side where it becomes negative. So I get 18.72x minus 12.33 equals 14.91y. Almost done there. I need to figure out what y is, so what's our last step here? Divide both sides. So that's one, that's one expression. Why don't you see if you can't figure out what y is over here? Essentially, you're going to be doing the same thing. Then we're going to need to plug these things into our calculators. Now, unless your calculator is up to date, when you plug those in, make sure that you use parentheses around the numerators. And then hit the divide key. So we'll play the same game here, move that over, move this over, we get 6.21x minus 17.82 equals 12.92y. 6.21x minus 17.82 divided by 12.92 equals y. So a little bit of extra work in solving it this way, that's all right. Let's put both of those into our calculators. For the first one, I'll put it in in kind of a traditional way. That is, I'm going to take my expression and put it in parentheses. So 18.72x minus 12.33. Right parenthesis divided by 14.91. So that's the way a lot of you are going to get stuck doing it. If you have an up-to-date operating system, then we can do it a little bit more naturally. So let's see that. You hit the alpha key, then the y equals key. The first option allows you to type in a, a fraction. And so now we don't have to worry about parentheses so much. It's just going to be 621 x minus 17.82 divided by 12.92 like that. You hit the alpha key then the y equals key and then type the number 1. Now when you hit alpha and then y equals if you don't get a nice menu then you can't do it. 
Now, I'm not sure where to see where we should graph this, what we should set up our window. So I use kind of like a shotgun approach. I'm just going to give it a wide uh, shot. So the fastest way to get like negative 10 to 10 and negative 10 to 10 on your window is to hit the zoom key, zoom 6, zoom standard. So that gives you kind of a nice wide window. And hopefully it's going to be wide enough to see the points of intersection. Now, if I was really concerned about making a nice graph, maybe I'd change it. But you know what? All I'm looking for is the points of intersection. You remember where we go to find the points of intersection, what buttons we have to hit? Nice. Second calc 5. It puts a cursor on one curve, press enter. It's got a cursor on the other curve. It asks for initial guess. Don't make your calculators work too easy. Just hit enter. Make it work hard. You should get roughly what I'm getting here, about point, negative 0.712 for x and negative 1.721 for y. How many people were able to keep up with that and get that? All right, pretty good. Victoria, need some help? You got it? Okay, all right. All right. I hope you enjoyed section 10.1. For homework 29 through 37, 45, 47, 51, 53 and 63. One, two, three, five. Like maybe what? Ten problems? Eight, nine problems? Okay, so not too bad, I hope.